House will come back to order. House will come back to order. The chair recognizes Representative Jaspers for a motion. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and Representatives. I move that the House insist on its position on the substitute to SB 101 that a committee on conference be appointed. Representative Jaspers has moved that this House insist on its position to the substitute to Senate Bill 101 and that a committee of conference be appointed. The clerk will read the caption. Senate Bill 101 by Senator again, 47th. Bill being entitled Act, Amendment Title 8, 16, 27, 43, relating to buildings, housing, crimes, fences, gaming, fish, professions, and businesses, respectively, so to regulate the sale, use, and possession of firearms in this state. Is there objection to the motion of Representative Jaspers? Chair hears none. This House has insisted on its position. The Chair appoints as a committee of conference Representative Meadows from the 5th, Representative Jaspers from the 11th, and Representative Allen Powell of the 32nd as a committee of conference on Senate Bill 101.
show that it's being done.
long time ago, but <laughs> in view of a uh, message that we have just now received from the Senate, the chair recognizes Chairman Golick for a motion. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I move that the House insist on its position on House Bill 142 and a committee of conference be appointed. Chairman Golick has moved that this House insist on its position on House Bill 142 and the committee of conference be appointed. The clerk will read the caption. House Bill 142, by Representative Ralston, the 7th. The bill will be entitled at Mentile 21 related to ethics in government. On the motion of Chairman Golick that this House insist on its position on House Bill 142 and that a committee of conference be appointed, is there objection? Chair hears none. It is so ordered and the chair appoints as a committee of conference on House Bill 142. Representative O'Neill from the 146th, Representative Golick from the 40th, and Representative Meadows from the 5th.
Chair. Chair recognizes House will be in order. We got a little bit more business to finish up. If you can hang in here with me just a little bit. Chair recognizes Chairman Stevens for a motion. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I move this House agree to the Senate substitute to House Bill 318. Chairman Stevens has moved that this House agree to the Senate substitute to House Bill 318. The clerk will read the caption. House Bill 318, Representative Stevens, 164th Bill being Title Act, been Title 48 related to the Georgia Tourism Development Act. On your desk, you have the House Pass version of House Bill 318, upper right hand corner, LC 343820ERECS. The Senate substitute, House Bill 318, also printed on your desk, upper right hand corner, LC 34-3860S. Chair recognizes Chairman Stevens to explain his motion. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Ladies and gentlemen of the House, what we have with House Bill 318 with the Governor's Bill that originally started out with our Tourism Destination Attraction Bill that you've seen many times before that has finally come back, I believe, pretty well perfected. It eliminated two of the constitutional problems we had, one being the Governor's being the final decision uh, on making the decision on where these projects were to go. The other was um, eliminating the potential for uh, constitutional conflict with the local sales tax portion. The way this works, of course, is once you build this mega tourism attraction, then you're able to recoup 2.5% per year for a maximum over 10 year period for a total of 25% and recoup that once you build and invest uh, in these attractions, um, then you're able to recoup your capital cost. The um, uh, Senate added several pieces, actually the biggest piece has to do with uh, the Angel Investment Fund. Um, and it, I think I, everybody's scanning through that right now. This is uh, uh, something that's essentially already into law and, and it's um, something that's already there. It expands the Invest Georgia Fund uh, to the point that I believe we can finally get a bill that would be good for our um, uh, incubator fund, as you might um, call it. So essentially, that's what it does, Mr. Speaker. And if there's any questions, I'll try to answer those. If not, you have I'll a question me. if you care to yield. Yes, sir. Chair recognizes the minority leader of the House, Representative Abrams, to your left for a question. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Will the gentleman yield? Yes. Um, looking on page 13, lines 437 through 441. Uh, it is my understanding that this language, although it adds funding and identifies the uh, approximately $100 million that will go towards the Invest Georgia Fund, it is my understanding that these dollars would not be allocated during this fiscal year. Is that, that is correct. correct. Yes. Thank you. If there's no other questions, Mr. Speaker, I'll ask for your favorable consideration and I'll yield the well. You had another question, but the gentleman has yielded the well. On the motion of the gentleman that this House agree to the Senate substitute to House Bill 318, all those in favor will vote yes. Those opposed will vote no, and the clerk will unlock the machines. Have all members voted? Have all members voted? If so, the clerk will lock the machines on the pass or on the gentleman's motion. The ayes are 135, the nays are 28. The, this House has agreed to the Senate substitute to House Bill 318. What purpose does Chairman Meadows rise? Make a motion. State your motion. 
Move that Senate Bill 224 be recommitted to rules. Chairman Meadows has moved that Senate Bill 224 be recommitted to the Rules Committee. Clerk will read the caption. Senate Bill 224 by Senator Golden, Bill of Entitled Act Men Title 10, relating to the Seed Capital Fund. On the motion of the Chairman of the Rules Committee that Senate Bill 224 be recommitted to the Rules Committee, is there objection? Chair hears none and it is so ordered. Chair wants to announce that Senate Bill 187 will be postponed to the next legislative day. Senate Chair also announces that Senate Bill 65 will be postponed to the next legislative day. If you have an announcement and need to have not signed up, you need to see the messenger immediately. We're about to go to announcements. Chair recognizes the chair of the Health and Human Services Committee, Chairman Cooper, for an announcement. Just a minute, Madam Chair. All right, we're not finished yet, so let's give attention to the members who are making announcements. Chairman Cooper. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Health, Human Serv Health and Human Services Committee will meet immediately upon adjournment in room 403 of the Capitol. 403. We are down to one bill and one House resolution, so if you will come immediately, maybe we can get you out in just a few minutes. Thank you. Chair recognizes Representative Harbin for an announcement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Members of the Sales Tax Subcommittee of Ways and Means, our meeting has been postponed. We will meet Wednesday. Uh, the time will be determined and it will be put on your desk tomorrow, but it's been postponed from this evening and we'll meet Wednesday. Chair recognizes Chairman Stevens for an announcement. Members of the Economic Development and Tourism Committee, we will postpone our meeting today. We'll meet tomorrow at 2 o'clock in room 406 CLOB. Chair recognizes Chairman Parrish for an announcement. 
Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Ladies and gentlemen, the Health Subcommittee of Appropriations will meet immediately upon adjournment in room 341. Thank you. Chair recognizes the Chairman of the House Appropriations Committee, Chairman England, for an announcement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The House Full Appropriations Committee will meet directly upon the adjournment of the Health Subcommittee meeting in 341, which will be right after we adjourn. Thank you. Chair recognizes Chairman Sheldon for an announcement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. There will be a majority caucus meeting in the morning, 6.06 .06 at 8 a.m. Chair recognizes Chairman Weldon for an announcement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Juvenile Justice Committee meeting set for adjournment uh, has been canceled. We'll, re we'll let you know when we're going to reschedule it. Thank you. Is that going to be next week? <laughs> Chair recognizes Representative Braddock for an announcement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Women's Caucus will have a reception this Wednesday evening at the home of Tripp and Jenny Martin um, from 4 to 6 this Wednesday evening. And if you're a member of the Women's Caucus, we'd love for you to join us. Thank you. Chair recognizes Representative Flood for an announcement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Minority Caucus will meet tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock in room 406. 8 o'clock in room 406 in its CLOB. Thank you. Chair recognizes the Majority Leader of the House for a motion. Mr. Speaker, I move this House now adjourn until Tuesday morning at 10 a.m. March the 26, 2013. On the motion of the Majority Leader that this House be adjourned until Tuesday, March 26th at 10 a.m. All those in favor of the motion will say aye. Those opposed will say no. The ayes have it. This House will be adjourned until tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Uh, if I could have your attention, please. If I could have your attention, please, with the permission of you. You going to go back to the well? Yeah, Chairman Sheldon. Yeah, that, that's the well. <laughs> <laughs> Chairman Sheldon for an amendment to her announcement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to amend the Majority Caucus meeting. We will meet at 9 a.m. tomorrow morning in room 606. Now we are adjourned.